So hello, welcome to our online class, 11 ways you can get a head start on your LinkedIn profile now. Um, before we begin, I'm just going to go through what we'll cover. So I'm going to explain why it's so important to have a brilliant LinkedIn profile and 11 things that you can do right now to get a head start on yours. I've really got, also got a really helpful tool to share with you at the end. And also, I'm going to answer any questions you have about LinkedIn. So if there's anything when you're watching the class that comes to mind that we don't cover, or you've got a question about something we talk about, um, ask me. You can pop it into chat. Um, and at the end of the class, I will get to those and answer those for you. So before I begin, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Hannah Martin and I founded the Talent Ladies Club. Um, I was one of the co-founders and we launched almost four years ago. Um, I'm also an award-winning copywriter with 20 years of experience working for some of the world's biggest ad agencies. Um, and part of what I did as my job was selling in, selling in me, selling in work. So I'm really, really good at um, about knowing how to sell myself and get people to buy that, whether it's to hire me for a job or to um, take on a, a concept or to hire me as a freelancer. So I'm going to share some of that insight with you today. Um, today, I also teach workshops on LinkedIn and career development, um, and I give talks at events, um, and I create online courses to help you make sense of job hunting and secure a role you love. So why is LinkedIn so important? Um, just very quickly, 93% of companies today use LinkedIn for recruit recruiting, um, and the same goes for freelance clients as well. It's become a really important professional tool. So we the people actually go and search for you on there, so they go on LinkedIn to look for um, to look for freelancers and to look for employees. Um, and, I, and I spoke to a headhunter and she said that was the first place they would go. They would go onto LinkedIn and they would look for local people who had profiles on there. So they go and look for you on there, but they also use it as vetting. Um, and again, many of them say that not having a LinkedIn profile can be a real, real um, red flag for them. So if they can't find you on, on LinkedIn, they may dismiss you, um, and certainly it doesn't give the opportunity to find out more about you. 73% of recruiters have said have used social media to hire candidates. Um, and really importantly, you can't just put anything up there. You have to really take time of your profile. And complete profiles receive 40% more opportunities. And that fact, that statistic has actually come directly from LinkedIn themselves. So we, we recently ran a survey to find out um, how people felt about LinkedIn. And, and actually, probably unsurprisingly, 93% um, of the people who, who responded were on LinkedIn already, um, because most of people who read our site are, are generally quite proactive. But 40% of them didn't use LinkedIn more because they didn't know what to do with it. And we asked them to rate their confidence um, out of 10, so 1 being very low and 10 being very high. And the average level was 3.9 or 39%. So they really didn't feel that confident. Um, and 45% said they struggled with all of LinkedIn. So we want to make LinkedIn really easy for you. Um, and that's what we've put on this webinar. And we're going to explain, or I'm going to explain, 11 things that you can do to get a head start on your profile today. So number one, really easy and really simple, getting a profile up in the first place. So according to job, a job rate survey, only 36% of job seekers are active on LinkedIn. And yet 93%, as we found out, of companies use it for recruiting. So just by getting something up there, you're ahead of 64% of other job seekers. So what can you do if you haven't got a LinkedIn profile yet? It probably seems really daunting. So just break it down into simple steps. Book out a few hours, so a morning or afternoon or an evening, and commit to getting the start on your LinkedIn profile then. Get someone to take a good headshot, or headshot of you, and we'll, we'll cover headshots um, later. Um, so get a good headshot. Um, use your CV as guidance for your experience. So most people have a CV. So if you're really stuck with somewhere to start, Take your CV and extract bits from that and put it into your profile. Um, and also, it's really important to research the kind of job or opportunity you'd like to land because you have to write your profile for the opportunity you want. So when you're writing it, don't just keep in mind what you want to say about yourself. 
Think about what the people that you want to read your profile, what they want to see, what will convince them that you're the best employee or the best potential freelance, um, freelancer for them. Um, and if you're really stuck, go on our site and just put LinkedIn into the search box and you'll find a few articles on our site that will hopefully give you some help. So number two, as I mentioned, adding a profile photo. It's really important if you haven't got one, as soon as this, this um, class ends, go and put one up now. Um, it's one tiny part of your profile you really can't afford to forget. Adding a profile photo will get you 21% more profile views and it makes it 36 times more likely you'll receive a message because people will know, if they're looking for you and they know you and they see your photo, they know they've found the right person. And it also, if you don't have a photo, again, it it has, in this day and age, most of us have our online brand and, and your LinkedIn profile is your online professional brand. And we have our brand online. And if you don't have a photo, people wonder why you haven't put it on there or are you not particularly savvy online? So people will expect to see a photo on there. Um, but you can't just add any old photo. You need to make sure it's professional. But that said, it doesn't have to be a professional shot. So don't worry about getting a professional photographer and lining one up to do that and paying for it. It just has to look professional, which means no holiday snaps, no picture of you and your child. Don't cut out a photo of you from 10 years ago partying with your friends because you look really good and really young, or you've got a glass of wine in it. These are all big, big no-nos, okay? It just needs to be a professional um, head and body shot, head and shoulder shot, sorry, no full body shots, just head and shoulders. And, and also it's a really small thing, but just make sure it's not pixelated. Remember, your LinkedIn profile is part of your online brand. And anything that makes it look less than perfect will potentially reflect on you. So number three, really important this is, and this is something a lot of people overlook, and that's finding your keywords. So LinkedIn search works pretty much like Google SEO or any SEO. And for that, you need to know what your keywords are. And these are, if you think about it, what words is your ideal employer, or if you're freelance, a potential freelance client, putting in LinkedIn to find someone like you? So just twitch twi twi yourself around and think, instead of from your shoes, think of the shoes of someone who's hiring someone like you, and what might they search in LinkedIn to find you? And these are a good way to come up with your keywords. Take the time and research your keywords properly. They're the cement that holds your profile together, and they really are, because if you get your keywords right, your profile will come to the top of a search, um, or will stand more, more chance of doing so, um, so you're more likely to get found. But then when your employer's reading it, they're going to unconsciously see words that tick their yes box. So these are really important, and, and you don't just want to get them into your, like your summary. Um, so what is a good keyword? So a good keyword is specific to your skills. Don't be too general, and it's specific to your industry, okay? So remember, these are things that a potential employer or a freelance client will put into LinkedIn to try and find you. So make them really specific. They're not overused buzz buzzwords like effective and team player. These are far too general. Um, people don't, if they're looking to hire someone, um, let's say they're looking to hire a, a marketing director, they're not gonna put effective marketing director into a search box. They might put experienced marketing director, or they might put marketing director specialized in social media, or they might put marketing director West Sussex, but they won't put things like great team player, into a search. So these are not great keywords. It also has to be genuine. Um, you really are that thing or you really can do it. It's all well and good getting your profile found by the right people, but if your experience doesn't reflect the keywords you've chosen, you're not going to get any further than that. Or even if someone hires you, uh, sorry, even if someone asks to meet you, and you can't back up the things you're saying, or you can't genuinely deliver on what you're promising in your keywords, again, you're not gonna get any further. So make sure these are genuine, they are appropriate to you and what you can do. And again, it's got to be something employers are searching for. You might come up with a brilliant keyword for yourself um, and actually find that people aren't looking for that keyword. So you actually have to, to do some research and find out, are these keywords the things that people genuinely are looking for? Am I just imagining that they are? And other things to consider, as I just mentioned in the examples I gave, so think about your level of experience. 
um, and the location where you are. If you're looking for a job or um, a freelance project that requires you to meet your client or be physically somewhere, location will definitely play a part in your keywords because people are going to be looking for people who are very localized. Um, and also consider whether you want, if you're looking for a part-time or a full-time role, whether you want to put that into your keywords as well. Again, it's not about attracting the largest number of connections or opportunities or people to find you. It's about attracting the right ones, okay? So if you don't, for example, if you don't put um, location or part-time into your keywords and someone finds you and you are a perfect fit for them, but then they're 500 miles away and they need someone in-house, that's gonna be no good to you. And likewise, if someone finds you and they're offering you a full-time position and you can only do part-time, however amazing that, that opportunity is, it's not right for you and it's not going to help you. So don't worry about finding the largest number of searches. Make sure you're found by the right people that are looking for you. And those are the only people you want. You want quality results and your keywords can really help you to achieve that. So how to use your keywords. So once you've found the keywords you want to use, what do you do with them? So basically, you want to get them in your profile wherever you can. So a bit like Google SEO, any SEO, um, you want to make sure that your keywords are liberally infused throughout the copy. So if you can, try and get them in every single section of your, your profile. Um, again, think of SEO practices, so use them in headlines and sprinkle naturally in body copy. And that word naturally is really important. Um, I've been a, a freelance writer for many, many years. And when or, writing for the web first came out, um, people thought we had to hire specialist SEO copywriters because SEO was seen as this, this more dark art. Um, and what people used to do was something called keyword stuffing. So what they used to do is, is someone who set themselves as an SEO copywriter and wasn't a properly trained copywriter might just write copy that had the, the keyword five times in every sentence. Um, and Google very, very quickly um, kind of switched onto this and changed the algorithm so actually it, it didn't work and it had to be natural because what you've got to remember is you're writing for people not just search engines and if you stuff those keywords into your profile to the point where your profile reads really strangely yes you might get found but you're not going to make a great impression and yet again people are going to stop at the point of finding your profile they're not going to want to read on and they're not going to be impressed enough to get in touch with you so make sure that you use your keywords wisely and use them naturally in your copy so i've got some ideas for how you can use your keywords so you can add them to your job title and your LinkedIn URL because you can um, have a, a, a bespoke LinkedIn URL. You can add them to your location, your headline, your summary, your experience, your endorsements and projects, volunteering and other sections. Um, so when I say location, for that obviously if you think about if, you, if your location is one of your keywords, that's a great place to put it in. So there's plenty of opportunity to weave those in naturally all over your profile. So number five, I don't know if you know this already, but Google, um, sorry, uh, LinkedIn has something called all-star status. And basically, it's seven set criteria for a complete profile. So it has a, a tick list of the seven things that you need to do, and then it's, it gives you all-star status. And why this is important is because all-star profiles tend to rank higher in LinkedIn search results. But uh, you can't just add each section or tick the task off. You do need to complete them properly. Um, so I'll just explain what the criteria are. So you need to have a profile photo. You need to add experience. But you can't just um, put one or two things in. You need to add, I think it's at least two, and you need to fill them in properly. So you need to not just put something there. It has to be acceptable to LinkedIn. You need to add your skills. You need to have a summary. You need to add your industry and location, education, and you need 50 connections. If you tick all those things off and you do them properly, you will get LinkedIn All-Star Criteria. So use your skill section. So as I just mentioned, how, doing something with a skill section is really important for LinkedIn and it helps to tick off that criteria for All-Star status. But don't just passively wait for people to rank you for skills they choose. Your skill section is really important. So be proactive and think about 
the skills that employers value. So whether you're looking for a job or whether you're looking to find freelance clients, think about the skills related to what you do that will impress them. Then order your skills so the most important ones are at the top and then reach out and ask people to rank you for them. So it's really important to be proactive and not just wait. So really simply know the skills people want, get them in the right order, and then go and ask people to rank you for them. Ask for endorsements. So pretty much um, the same principle implies for endorsements. Um, LinkedIn actually allows you to ask people to endorse you. So through your profile, you can go and connect with people and send them a quick message. Um, I think it either has like a, a set message you can just send or you, or you can tailor it. And I, I personally would recommend tailoring it. Um, be specific when asking them. So tell them ideally what you'd like them to include your club cover. Um, this doesn't just get you what you want, but it makes it easier for them, increasing the likelihood of them complying. Because let's face it, if you sent someone an email saying, um, can you endorse me? Thanks. It's, they've got no idea what to write. They don't know no idea what you expect. They want to make you happy, but they want to hear the right things. Um, and they'll think, oh, I'll get this done, but I'll get it done later because it's too difficult to do now. And the chances are that will never make their to-do list. But if you're really specific um, and you say, can you endorse me for these things, not only um, are you going to make it easier for them because it's like, okay, or well, you could even, if you want to, write something and say, are you happy to, can you, you could just use this if you like, or tweak it or write something. Because if you make it easier for someone to do something, they're more likely to do it. Um, and, and in fact, if you go and look at our site, I recently wrote an article about this, about how you ask for endorsements, and I included a template of an email you can send. So if you put LinkedIn into the search box on our site, you'll find an article about how to ask for endorsements on LinkedIn, and that will explain in much more detail than I can here how you do it and exactly what you ask. So be active, this is really important. One of the other big mistakes people make is they think that they can just do their profile and that's it, they're done. LinkedIn is ticked off that list um, and it's working away in the background, getting them the job they really love or bringing in freelance clients and they can relax. And that's just not the case. Yes, you can do that, but you're much less likely to get the results you want than by being active on it. So don't just do your profile and hope for the best. You need to help it get noticed being active. And there are a number of ways that you can do this. Um, just a few ideas are joining and um, participating in LinkedIn groups, publishing authority posts on LinkedIn, and publishing regular status updates. Because um, LinkedIn has a, a feed, very much like Facebook, um, and you can publish updates on that feed. Um, and what that will do, a very basic thing, is even if you're just sharing things that you find that are interesting and relevant to your target um, people, to the employees you want to impress or your freelance clients, um, you can stay in people's minds. So to give you an example, there could be someone who has a LinkedIn connection with you and you worked last work with five years ago, and they're currently looking for someone who exactly fits your profile, but they've forgotten about you because it's been so many years. They're on LinkedIn one day and they see a status update that you put, and that reminds them, oh God, yeah, I forgot about her. You know, Hannah was really, really good. Um, I wonder what she's doing now. They click on your profile, they see from your profile that you're either freelancing or you're looking for a role right now, and they get in touch. If you hadn't have posted that status update, they may never have remembered you, and that opportunity could have gone to someone else. So this is a, just a tiny example of why it's really important to do something as simple as posting status updates. And if you can do that daily, all the better. Um, even just weekly would help, but just being active on there keeps you front of mind and helps remind people that you're there and that you're good. And again, yeah, share industry news and insights is a really great way to get noticed on LinkedIn. Reaching out to your network. Okay, so if you're like me, you've got hundreds of people on LinkedIn from all areas of your life. So I've got colleagues I used to work with. I've got people I met at networking events or, or conferences where I gave talks. Um, I've got people I've done business with, all kinds of people. Um, and they probably don't remember me every day um, because unless I come front of mind, I'm just like them, another connection to my network. Um, unless, of course, you reach out to them. So if you are actively looking for a new job or freelance work, don't be afraid to reach out to these people. So you can message connections from your industry and ask if they're looking for someone with your skills right now. 
And if not, do they know someone who might be? Um, if you ask politely, most people don't mind. Remember, LinkedIn is a business networking tool. People are on there to grow their network and to connect with people for business purposes and work purposes. So they won't mind a polite message that's friendly and is just asking them if, if you can help them or you can help someone they know. Um, and the worst thing someone's going to do is ignore you. Um, and the best case scenario is they might know somebody or they might know someone that needs it. So don't be afraid to just reach out. Um, and what you can do, if you don't want to be bombarding everybody, you could decide, okay, I'm going to reach out to two new people every week. It keeps it doable, um, it's manageable, it's not so daunting. And once you get doing it, and if you make it a habit, week on week on week, at some point you'll start to see payback. Uh, this is something I used to do when I was a freelance writer, um, and I, I was always busy and I always had work booked in, but if I looked ahead in my schedule and saw that two weeks' time that I didn't have any work lined up there, I would start connecting with recruiters, and I would contact um, two recruiters a day, and I would just send them an email just saying, hi, remember me, um, looking right now, don't know if you've got anything, um, and that's actually really paid off because I was never, ever without work. Um, as a freelancer, I was always being proactive, and I was reaching out to people. And this was these were the years I'm thinking about now, before LinkedIn, even when you had direct, you didn't have that, you didn't have LinkedIn to go to, you had direct contact with people. But it's about being proactive, and it's being unafraid to just let people know you're around, what you're looking for, and remind them of why you're good. Um, but before you do this, make sure your profile is right, because. If you're going to be making the effort to go and expand your network and reach out to people and remind them, the first thing they'll do is look at your profile to see what you're doing now. And if your profile doesn't make the right impression, the opportunity stop could stop right there. So it's really important to get your profile absolutely right before you start reaching out and start being active. See who's looking at you. So this is an extension of reaching out to your existing network and it's growing a new one. So if you've set your privacy up to do to do so on LinkedIn, you can see who's looked at your profile and vice versa, so they can see if you've looked at them. And this is a really good strategy that I've I've learned from recruiters that they do. Um, so if someone interesting has checked you out, consider connecting with them and even possibly sending them a message. So they've looked at your profile, they know you exist, and there must be a reason why they've looked at your profile. So you can um, politely send a connection request with them and say, I see, maybe I see you kept, if you checked out my profile, I'd be really interested in connecting with you and seeing if I could help you. It's a really polite message. Um, and you can also use, use it strategically in reverse by checking the profiles of people you want to notice you. So if there are people that are looking for someone like you and you want to take that first very tentative step, just check out their profile. If they're quite active on LinkedIn, they may look at who's been looking at their profile. They'll see you, be curious about you, and go and look at your profile. So this is just like a really clever way to use one part of LinkedIn to grow your network um, with people who are potentially, hopefully, looking for someone like you. And number 11, our final thing that you can do today is to join Love LinkedIn. So we know, because um, we're busy as well, it's really easy to select your LinkedIn profile, slip to the bottom of your to-do list. And that's why we created an online course. That's really easy. It makes it really easy for you to get your LinkedIn profile right. So Love LinkedIn guides you step by step through everything that you need to complete your profile. Um, and it makes sure also that people will find and love it. Um, so we teach you how to get your profile absolutely right, to get all-star status, but then also to help people find your profile. And it's designed so you can work through the whole course in just a few hours. So how does the course work? It's basically made up of short video tutorials um, that then you watch those and follow simple written exercise to complete each section. So the videos are as short as two or five minutes. You watch a really quick video that shows you how to write your headline, that shows you how to write your summary, and then we've got a written exercise to guide you through it. We also take you behind the scenes in your profile. We show you exactly where to click and, what, and also tell you what to write to tell you how to get those things right um, and how to get all-star status. And finally, we also show you 20 really easy strategies to help you get your profile found by recruiters. So what will you learn? You'll learn some clever tricks to research your perfect keywords and where to place them. Um, you'll learn the five golden rules of the perfect profile photo. 
how to write a LinkedIn headline that will get you found by the right employers and a really easy way to test it. So you can actually make sure over time that you hone your headline down so you get the best performing headline. We show you how to complete every single one of the important sections of your profile and how to find the right skills and order them correctly. How to make sure you have your profile set to the right privacy settings for your search and how to approach people and confidently answer recommendations and endorsements. Um, and this is all on one really easy to use learning platform. So once you log into the course, you find all of it in one place. Um, so the videos are there, we've got um, training presentations, you've got exercises, you've got um, checklists that you can download and tick off to make sure you're following it all correctly. Um, it's all in one place to make it really easy for you. So who's, linked, who's Love LinkedIn ideal for? Um, we've designed it for people who already have a profile but need to improve it, but also of complete beginners. So don't worry if you haven't got a profile yet. Um, we can teach you from scratch. So if you've already got a profile and it's improving or you're doing it from scratch, Love LinkedIn can help. You'll, help, you'll find it helpful if you're looking for a new job now or you plan to look for soon. Um, and it's also good for freelancers and entrepreneurs who are looking for clients, work and business opportunities. Because remember, your profile isn't just there to help you secure a job, it's also there to, um, excuse the phone, so I forgot to unplug that. Um, it's also there to help you find um, business opportunities and it's your online brand. So this is how you get a good impression um, with people, how you um, showcase who you are. If you meet someone at a conference, <laughs> I think it's finished. It has now. That's really distracting. So yeah, so if you meet someone at a conference, for example, I don't know about you, but one of the first things I do is I connect with them on LinkedIn. Um, and certainly I was at a conference last week, um, and straight away during the conference and afterwards, everyone was connecting with everyone else. Um, and you want to make the right opportunity, right impression on that because people might be looking for potential connections with you, opportunities to work together, speakers for events, all of these things they will check you out on, on LinkedIn. And also don't forget that if someone Googles you, the chances are your LinkedIn profile will be top or very close to top of that search results. And it's usually, it usually will come up above your own business website. So if you haven't got your LinkedIn profile right, you risk someone looking at that before they look at anything else and getting the wrong impression of you, which is why it's so important to get that profile right, even if you're not looking for a job. Um, so yes, you'll also find Love LinkedIn helpful if you want to build your personal brand and get noticed by the right people. So we've taken a few people through the course already um, with brilliant results. Um, so this is what one lady, Beata, said about it. Um, we take you through LinkedIn step by step in a series of clear, well thought through videos and slide presentations. Not only does we explain what sort of things should be included in your profile, but how to click on, what to click on as you go along. Uh, and Sharon said that she loved our straightforward, pragmatic, simple step-by-step -step approach and clear instruction, including the fact that each stage was summarised with an action plan. The course is broken down to manageable, easy steps to take, so none of it felt overwhelming or difficult. If you've done any of our training before, you'll know that one thing we really try to make sure is that our courses are, are um, both comprehensive, um, but also really, really clear and easy to use um, that we present our information in bite-sized chunks so you can work through it and genuinely get the results that you signed up to get. So if you want to find out um, about it, you can um, log on here to tanzadiesclub.com forward slash love LinkedIn and you can also see a video tour behind the scenes if you want to find out what it's like inside. Um, and it's just £49, um, which is a bargain for how much you get, how much stuff is in there, and, and, and the results you can get from it. Um, if you join, you can get access today straight away. As soon as you join, you get access to everything, so it's not drip fed, all the content's there. Plus, um, if you join in the next 48 hours, um, you'll get a very special bonus. Actually, it's not 48 hours of extended, that is two next uh, Monday, the 8th of May. We've got a really special bonus for you. So. Your LinkedIn profile, your summary, is one of the most important parts of your profile. But most people also find it the trickiest to write. Um, and I certainly do. The hardest thing to do is to write about yourself. Um, so in Love LinkedIn, we teach you a really easy system to write yours. We break it down and show you what needs to be in it and how you write it. But to help you, we've also got a special offer for you right now. 
So if you're doing Love LinkedIn in the next, again, by next Monday, um, we'll also send you our Done For You Summary Builder. So our Summary Builder makes it really easy to write a summary because we prompt you through the process. So it's an Excel spreadsheet and what we do is we take each section of it and we ask you questions and then all you do in the box next to it is just answer the question and then you pull that copy out and that is your summary and it's that easy to do. But it's only available if you join before midnight on the 8th of May. So if you join the course before the 8th of May, you will get that summary builder. But if you join afterwards, it won't be available. So to grab your copy now, just sign up um, at Love LinkedIn and we'll send it over to you. And finally, any questions? So I'm just going to open this up now. I can see we've got some. Um, let me have a look. So... Okay, so Laura asks, I am in the process of setting up my own business. I will not launch this until January 2018. When should I add this to my LinkedIn profile? So Laura, I probably would add this in your pre-launch um, process. So when you're almost ready to launch and you know your business is definitely launching on a certain date because um, all the will in the world, I know these things often change. I think we launched um, TLC two weeks after uh, the launch that we're supposed to have. So when you know your launch date will genuinely happen, uh, when you've got things like all your assets, so when you've got your logos ready, um, when you know exactly how you're going to talk about your business, how you've branded it, um, then get it up there. So make it part of your pre-launch buzz. So if you're going to be launching something, you want to get excitement going, you want to tease people, you can then get it up there and get, get whatever elements that you want that will help you. So you can, for example, create a company page on there and put that into your profile then. But don't do it before because often things change and January 2018 is quite a long way away. So, you know, your business idea might evolve before then. You might redo your branding even if you've done it by now. Um, so yeah, so, so I would do it in your pre-launch when you're sure that everything's right, you're sure you have your launch date, and you want to create some buzz. I hope that helps you. Do If you have other questions on that, please do feel free to ask. Um, brilliant. So Susanna asks, thank you, what a helpful workshop. I want to ask you if it's worth paying for LinkedIn Premium. So brilliant question. In fact, this is one of the, um, the top eight questions people asked when we did our survey. Um, there is actually, if you have a look on our site, um, I've answered this in more depth on there. Um, I think I published it last week. So if you, if you put a link into our search um, box on our site, you'll find this. But basically, the answer is maybe. Um, to clarify that, Basically, LinkedIn Premium just allows you to do more things on LinkedIn, to be more active on it and give you more scope. So if you are currently using LinkedIn and you're using it to the maximum, so you're doing all of the things that we recommend on the course, um, you are being really proactive and reaching out to people um, and you're frustrated because you want to do more, like right? you want to, for example, you want to connect people who want, you want to send messages to want connections of you, then yes, absolutely upgrade. They've got, I think, a job seeker package. I think it's 30 US dollars a month at the top of my head. Um, and if you're active in, in looking right now, you might just want to subscribe to the, the time that you're being active. Um, if you're not doing those things though, if you are just on LinkedIn, you've got your profile up, you're tentatively kind of reaching out, then it's not worth it. Because like I said, all it really does is it helps people who are really great users of LinkedIn anyway to do more. But if you're not using LinkedIn to its full capacity, you probably won't get value from it. But say, have a look on our site because I answer that in, in probably a little bit more depth than that. Um, so Susanna says, please can you give us some examples of effective headlines? Absolutely. So um, I'm going to give you an example of a, a freelance marketing director who lives in Brighton, who specialises in social media and who's looking for um, a part-time contract. So an example of that, so thinking about the keywords that might come from that, you might want to put freelance marketing, freelance, Brighton-based marketing director, specialised in social media, looking for freelance, looking for contracts, looking for freelance contracts, or some element of that. So basically, you want to think about what someone might be putting in a search box and how that you might um, demonstrate that in that headline. Okay, so that's an example of a 
really factual one, um, and that's really keyword heavy. Um, some people might use theirs to be more creative. So for example, if you're quite a big personality, um, if you work in, let's say you work in maybe like a youth media agency, for example, and you want your LinkedIn profile to really showcase your personality and what you can do. If you're a comedian, for example, you might want to put some humor into your headline. So you might want to make it funny. I will not attempt, I am not a funny person. <laughs> so I will not attempt to try and write a funny headline verbally now. Um, but you might want to put personality into it. Um, so you could do it that way. So basically the idea is just thinking about what someone is looking for and how your headline can deliver that. I hope that helps answer your question, Susanna. If not, please do ask more and I will try and elaborate further for you. Um, Okay, Catherine, it's just interesting webinar. Thank you very much, Catherine. Can you explain what you mean by a LinkedIn URL? Yes. Um, so if you just set your LinkedIn profile up and don't do anything, your profile will be something like linkedin.com forward slash, and then it will be a series of lesson numbers. Um, what you can do, there's an option in your profile, and I think it's top right. You click on something top right, and then the option is there so to create a bespoke URL. So you can write um, your own URL. So rather than it saying forward slash 730-91-AV-167, it could say um, Catherine Freelance Designer, for example, Freelance Designer. So that could be your LinkedIn URL. Um, that works because you're getting your keyword into it, but also it makes you easier to remember and easier to use. So someone might remember that. You can put that, if you've got a bespoke URL, for example, you can then put that into your email signature and things like that. So a bespoke URL is a really good thing to do. It's part of your personal branding as well. Um, so that's, that's what I mean. So Marie Claire, great webinar, thank you. Should you have two profiles, one for your business and one for you as an individual? Thanks. Um, I would say no. So I've seen people do um, do this kind of thing really well. So they have, in their experience, what they do is they'll do a start date into present, and they'll do that for two things. So they've got more than one interest or more than one thing they're doing. They'll have um, them as separate um, separate things there. What you can do is, if you've got a business, what I would do is I set up I would set up a LinkedIn. Um, company page and put yourself down as an employee of that business um, on there and that's a really great way then what I would do is I would invest time on your, your business page because that's a really good way to showcase your business and get that out there and then you can share things on your your, your LinkedIn page but as the director of your business so I would just have one profile but I would get your, your business page up and running and I would really really use that I hope that, that answers your question. How do you get people to rank your skills, Yvonne asks. I've just changed careers, so I've reprioritized my skills. And basically ask them. Um, so first of all, Yvonne, what I would do, I would um, reorder your skills, if the skills you want are in there, but they're at the bottom. If they're not, I would edit your skills, so I would take out, I think there's a max number of skills you can have. I would remove skills you don't want to be known for. I would add in skills that you do, even if people haven't ranked you for them yet. And then I would just send emails to people. Or, or messages via LinkedIn and just say, um, I'm working on my LinkedIn profile, I would really appreciate it if you could rank me for these skills. Um, and in return, I'd be really happy to rank you for any skills you would like. So always, it makes it easier to ask people if you offer something back, you reciprocate. Um, so just send a really nice message to people, just saying, getting my LinkedIn profile done, I'd love it if you could rank me for these skills and tell them the skills, offer to rank theirs. It's really, that's a really easy way to do it. Um, so Susanna says, where does it show you have all star status and can others see it too? It shows if you could click on your profile, you will see, um, I think it's just under your, sum, your kind of the top box, it's got your profile photo, your headline, your summary in it. That around there, there's a little thing that it says how complete your profile is. Um, and it says there on your profile, when you look at it, if it's all star. I don't know if other people can see that, but link, what really matters actually is whether LinkedIn knows that, because it's LinkedIn that will serve your, your profile and search results more. So, um, so if you, but if you want to find out whether you've got it, if you click on your profile and then have a look at the top, 
on your profile page where you can edit all the sections, um, there's a little thing there that tells you whether you've got to all source status or not. Okay, so Annette asks, how do you structure your profile if you're looking at a portfolio career, i.e. wear different hats? Okay, it's a bit similar to Marie Claire's question. Um, so yes, yeah, so if you wear different hats, and some of them are uh, businesses, and if you're a freelancer, don't be afraid of, of considering yourself or treating yourself as a business. So for example, if you've got a freelance design business or a marketing business, um, if you're just a freelance designer, set up a business page on LinkedIn because you can use that in the same way I mentioned just now to Marie Claire. Um, and the other thing is, like I said, have different, um, so in your experience section, so list all the things you're currently working on and have them all listed to, to, to currently present, so they're all active now. Um, and the really important way to cover that is in your summary because that's where, where you are going to tell your story. And that's often one of the first things people look at. So however you want to sell yourself to whoever, you really need to do that in your summary and make sure you explain yourself in a coherent way so that it makes sense to somebody who's looking at your profile and they will know how to read the rest of your profile and what you want to be known for. So I'd say in your case, Annette, your summary is really, really important just to pull everything together so that even if you've got different things open, as it were, in your experience section, that your LinkedIn summary explains why that is and what you do. Oh, thank you, Laura, it's really, really helpful. Thank you. So Monica asks, I have a profile, etc. I would like to use LinkedIn for promoting my book. How do I do this without appearing that I'm selling? Okay, this is a really um, interesting question. So it's a bit like anything on social media. If you go out there and just say, look at me, aren't I great, buy my book, click on here, um, you won't get anywhere. Instead, what you want to think about is um, the people who will notice you and you want to notice you, what do they find interesting and useful relating to what you're doing? So for example, if, if your book, I'm going to take two, two examples, if your book is a non-fiction, let's say it's a business guide, um, then think about the subject matter and start sharing um, start sharing content that answers the questions that people might think about regarding to your business on there. So for example, to give you an example, if your book is about social media, you're a social media expert, start sharing content and talking about things that are social media related on LinkedIn. To establish yourself as a social media expert, go into LinkedIn groups, answer questions about it, but just make sure that you weave in mentions of your book every now and then. So for example, um, that your book is obviously mentioned on your profile, occasionally you can mention it, or give an example of how it helps, but don't be pushy, and just make sure that the, that magical 80-20% ratio Sorry, yeah, 80 20 ratio. But 80% of what you're doing is helping other people and being genuinely useful. Then you can get away with 20% self promotional. And that same ratio appears if, you, if you've written a fiction book. So it's not as obvious then, for example, they're not helping people solve a problem. But there are fans and the people that you will want to read your book, or for example, if you want publishers to notice you, or you want people to notice you to give talks at events, whatever group of people you want to connect with, think of why they're on LinkedIn and what they're interested in related to what your book offers or what you offer, and make sure you set, you share content like that. It's about being genuinely useful, and off the top of my head, some thoughts are, you can look for LinkedIn groups, people wanting to publish books, for example, set themselves up as writers, and offer advice, and just say, I'm a published author, and this is what I learned, or this is the advice I would give you. Um, and then if you want, you can, if you can add, um, you know, at the bottom, if you let's check out my book, here, here's a link to it, here you can have a look. Um, it's, it's about things like that. And likewise, with your LinkedIn status updates, you could put tips on being a great writer in there so that it establishes you as a professional writer. You have a profile as, as a writer on there. That becomes your personal brand. And then when you do talk about your book, people are already, they've seen a lot of stuff about you, that 80% of stuff are genuinely being helpful. They won't resent that 20%. You won't seem like you're selling. Um, and they also, they'll know that you're a great writer because you've shared lots of great stuff and they've been more likely to click on it. I hope that's really helpful and it's given you some, some thoughts. So Jess asks, 
where would you put part-time in your profile and could it put people off it feels like a dirty word in recruitment and yes you're right Jess um, and again I had a face-to-face -face LinkedIn workshop a couple of months ago um, and this is a question that came up and the answer to this is um, there may be times when you don't want to put it in your profile there may be times that um, it's not going to open any doors for you so you can put it in your profile or what you can do um, and again you can test this so you could put it in your profile leave it to your headline leave it for a couple of weeks see what kind of reception that gets and then change it and see if that changes the options that you get or, or the connections that you get um, or you could choose to not put it in and let people come to you um, and then sound them out during like a potential process of recruitment or process of testing you out and see. Um, and actually one thing that people ask quite often is, when do you ask for, for flexibility or part-time during the recruitment process? And just as a really long answer, but the short answer is, and this might help answer this question here, which is why I'm saying it. Um, if you go for a job interview and you're being interviewed by the owner of the business who can make an exact decision on this recruitment, on, on this hire, but is also you have the opportunity to sell yourself into there and then, it's appropriate to ask in that job interview. So towards the end of the interview, when they're thinking, this woman is amazing, I can't wait to hire her, she's fantastic for our company, then you can say, I'm just asking, could this role potentially be done on a flexible basis? They've already, they're sold on you, they want you, they're more likely to think favorably, and also that person can genuinely make the decision. Okay, so that's an example where you may want to ask for, for part-time, in a, in a recruitment process, that's a, a good opportunity to ask for it there. Where I wouldn't ask for it is if you've got a job interview by an HR person, they're not going to make a decision for you on the job based on you. What they're probably doing is filtering people down so that they only send the best people to the final interview where they're potentially interviewed by the person who generally will work with you. If you ask that person about part-time working, it's a tick in the box of no for them. They know it's a full-time role. They're looking for reasons to pare people down, to get that list smaller. Any excuse you give them to get them off that list, so they, they might have a remit to give three people for a final interview, and they're interviewing 10 people. They're looking for reasons to tick people off their list, okay? So if you ask a part-time then, you're likely to, to miss out and not get through. Um, and also, only a very small percentage of roles are advertised as part-time, but a lot more of them, like I say, if, if you get into that interview and they love you and they're thinking, you're the only person you want to hire, and you ask for flexible work working, then you're more likely to get it. And the reason I say all of that when you've asked about LinkedIn is it, putting it on your LinkedIn profile is potentially doing it really early in that process. So before someone's even been sold, sold, been sold in by you and fallen in love with you, you're already off their list potentially. So it's a good excuse for not putting it on your profile. The only times that I would think that you would put it on your profile is if you work in an industry that it's really common to have part-time roles. You know there are lots out there and that actually people want part-time employees. For that reason it might be worth putting it on there because they might be out there looking and putting that into their search terms. You want to make sure they find you. But if you're in a competitive industry that is less likely to actively go out and look for flexible people, an industry that, that doesn't believe that part-time can work, or has got the luxury of picking the best person on their terms because it's so competitive, I wouldn't put it on your profile. So I hope that's really helpful. Again, if any, same goes to anyone. If you've got further questions, please do ask. Okay, Sarah asks, do you have any advice for running a LinkedIn company page along with a personal profile? Um, so yes, what I would do, I'd treat them quite differently. I would have your personal profile up. I would run the company page. Um, and I would be putting updates through your company page about the things that your company is doing um, and running that, have your own strategy for your company page and then your strategy for your personal page is to share this what you're doing and also share things from your company page and I've got, I haven't got my schedule to hand, I got, uh, I think I've published it, if you put LinkedIn onto our site um, I think it might be already up there. Yes, it is. Um, there's some tips on there about how you run a company page. Um, and if you have any questions, do, do feel free to email me afterwards and I'll elaborate further. Basically, you run it alongside, but make sure you understand how to run your company page properly. Really use that and then, and then your own profile 
as the person who runs or owns your company, share updates on your own, of your own personal profile as well. But do feel free to email me if you've got further questions on that. So Talia says, thank you for the webinar, so useful. Thank you, Talia. I have a LinkedIn profile, but it definitely needs improvement. Just wondering, how do you create a bespoke, bespoke URL address? Um, okay, so yes, just answered that. Um, and you've asked, is it a feature for premium accounts only? No, it's available for everybody. And like I said, if you go in, I can visualize it, it's sort of towards the top on the right, you click on something, and then it gives you the option to, to update the, UR, the URL there. Um, Oh, thank you. So Catherine says, I've completed your course and it actually got me off my butt and onto LinkedIn. Thank you. Um, do you advise job hunting? So I do advise hunting for prospects in private mode until finding the right people to approach or connect with. Um, that's really up to you. Um, I would say no, because if you're hunting for prospects, it's like fishing. You really want to get your net out there and catch people in. I would only do it, I would only switch to private mode if you really, for some reason, specifically didn't want someone, didn't want someone to know you were looking at their, at their, their page um, or their, their profile. I would, if it's, you know, very specific reasons, I would do it then. But as a general rule, I would keep it open because you never know when you look at someone's page and you might not think that there's any, any, use, any use in that to you, but they might be looking for someone like you. So as a general rule, I would keep it open um, and, just, and just wait for the results of that to come in, like potentially, you know, it might not, but it might do. And only go in private mode if there's a specific reason why you don't want someone to know you, you've had a look at their profile. Um, Say, for example, if you've got an interview with them that day, you're checking them out and you may just want to, you feel a bit shy about it. But other than that, I would keep it open. Oh, and I'm, by the way, I'm really pleased you've enjoyed the course, Catherine, so thank you. Um, so I'm, Lena says, I'm taking time out for a few months to decide my next steps. What's your advice to reflecting this in a way that keeps things flexible instead of leaving my previous job details up? Okay, so it's a brilliant way to do this. Um, and it's also a good thing that, a good thing to do that if you've got lots of different bitty things, if you've taken time out and you've done lots of things and it sounds really bitty and you're not sure how to do it, so what you can do is an experience, you can just open up a new experience and you could just say career development or um, research or personal development and then add in there all the things you're doing because chances are if you take time out, um, as we all know, we don't sit on our hands, we're really busy people um, and we're often doing things as well and um, particularly as women we often we're not very good at, at giving ourselves for credit for things. We're doing lots of things that are actually valuable to people but we don't put them in there. So for example if you volunteer, if you're in the, the, the PTA, things like that, if you help out at your child's nursery, if you do anything, um, get that in there. So have a section and you can put in there like career development, personal development, um, and then put in there all the things that you are doing and, and what you're doing right now. So taking a pause on my career to retrain, to upskill, to get experience in new section, to new things. You could put, you could be as general as that, or if you want to you be specific. So it gives you like a, um, it doesn't allow for any gaps in your profile, it gives you this seamless timeline, but it also spins it in a really positive way. Um, and if you want an example of how you can spin things, anything really positively, there's an article on, on our site called, I think, 17 skills you can put on your CV when you become a mum. Um, and it's, a quite, it's sort of an amusing article, but it looks at 17 things that you don't think, that skills that you've got. Um, so for example, uh, negotiation skills, anyone that's dealt with a toddler has to be an amazing as a negotiator. So it just, the reason I ask you to look at that is it gives you an example of how you can spin virtually anything into a career benefit. And, and, and it's not just a, a joke, because genuinely, when we take time out, if we're mothers, we are working all the time by raising our children, and we are learning new skills constantly. Um, our life experience and our soft skills grow, and soft skills are just as valuable to employers as tangible hard ones are. So don't overlook them, and make sure you get them in there. Have a look at that article, because it will just give you some idea of how, for that section on your LinkedIn profile, that you can you can um, spin things in a really positive way. 
So David says, I'm a freelance design engineer working across multiple industries. If I connect with a recruiter, aren't I allowing that recruiter access to all my connections who are in fact my competition for a new contract role I may be seeking? seeking. Okay, so really, if I connect with a recruiter, aren't I allowing that recruiter access to all my connections? Uh, that's a really interesting question. David, I need to have a look at that. Um, can you send me an email, hannah at talentedladiesclub.com and um, just so I've got your email address um, and I will look into that because there may be a way that you can resolve that so you can connect with them without them having access to your connections um, but I need to just go and check. So really happy to answer that David, I can't answer it right now but if you email me hannah at talentedladiesclub.com um, I will send you a reply after this and, and let you know the answer to that. Oh, thank you, Jessica. The webinar is great. So Talia says, if I'm logged into LinkedIn, I can't see everyone who's viewed me. I always assume this because I'm not a premium member. Is that right? Or they view me in private mode? If I can see they viewed me and then click through to their profile, will they see I viewed them? Okay, so the reason for this may be, if you can see everyone, okay, so if you can see no one that's viewed you, then you've set your profile to private mode, which means you can't see anyone else and they can't see you, okay? If you can only see some people, not all of them, then you your profile is set to public mode, which means people can see you and you can see them, but some of the people viewing your profile are in private mode, okay? So they're hidden to you. Um, so if you go and check in your privacy settings, you can really easily see what you set it to. Um, but yes, if you can see, so the second part of your question, if you can see they viewed you and you then go and click on their profile, they will be able to see you viewed them, yes. Because if you can see they viewed you, that means their profile is set to public and that means they will see you and they viewed them. So I hope that answers your question. So Lena says, does your course cover setting up a business page? It doesn't currently, Lena. It will help you set your profile up for um, as a business owner. Um, but actually, it is something I'm going to add in. If you, again, if you email me, hannah at talentedladiesclub.com, I will email you because we are putting another module onto this, which is how to do um, how to have a business page. And this will be live in a couple of weeks. Um, so if you send me an email, I will send you a link when it's live. And if you join up then, because I don't want you to miss out on the, the, the summary builder, I will honour the, the, the free summary builder. So if you email me, hannah at talentedladiesclub.com, I will let you know when the business page element is live. So if you want to join it then, you're very welcome to. And I will also, if you do sign up, I will send you the summary builder. So Susanna says, thanks Hannah, just followed your tips and managed to get all staff saved. It's brilliantly helpful, brilliant. Well done Susanna. It's it is actually quite easy as long as you just follow those seven things and get number 50 connections, you need 50 connections. Thank you, Annette says thank you. Stephanie says, I recently joined a group but have no idea how to access it via LinkedIn. Is there somewhere you access the groups you have joined? Thanks Stephanie. Yes there is. Um, I can't, I haven't got my profile up on um, the screen now but yes it's at the top it's not terribly intuitive LinkedIn um, but again if you email me hannah at talentedladiesclub.com after this and just remind me of your question I will screen grab it from my LinkedIn profile and send you a photo of the screen grab to show you where it is it is at the top it's not intuitive but it is there and so if you email me I'll send you a screen grab of exactly where you click thank you Monica says very helpful I'm glad you enjoyed it um, so Jess says, great tips, do you think, okay, so Jess asked the question earlier about freelance, um, should you put part-time on there, do you think that applies if you want three days, five days it could become four, but three is a game change or job share, I think the same thing Jess, what I would do if I were you, um, was not to mention it, apply for jobs that you really want, and then at the right stage of the recruitment process, ask if it's possible to do it flexibly. Um, I would do this if you're, if, you're, if you're in a competitive industry, because there are just some industries where if you say from the outset that you want it part-time, they don't even bother interviewing you, they, they don't need to. Um, it is changing, there are more um, 
open uh, employers out there. And in fact, if you are um, if you're in Sussex or Kent or I think Hertfordshire, Buckinghamshire, um, there's a brilliant company called Ten to Two. That's T E N, the number two, and then T W O, and they specialise in helping um, companies find people on a flexible basis. Um, and what's really, really good about them is, and I know certainly because I know Emma who runs the Sussex one, that if you go to Emma and you say, um, you, you register with them, and if you find companies that you want to work for, so you, there's three companies, let's say, in your hometown that you are ideally allowed to apply for jobs for, but you're not sure whether they take on flexible people, if you go to 10 to 2 and you approach them and say, can you go to these companies? They will go to these companies on your behalf and they will sell any idea of flexible working and they will sell you as well. That's a really amazing service that they offer. Um, so that's a really great way in. Even if you're not in those counties, have a look. There are loads of really good um, as a tune jobs, there's inclusivity, there are lots of people cropping up now, and there's time wise that specialise in helping um, match employers and flexible um, talent um, and if you go through them you are much more likely to find employers who are really sold on the idea of flexible working and are looking for someone like you but yeah to answer your question Jess I would not put it in your profile at the moment because as you say it's a game changer for some people going for three days and what you don't want to do you don't want to put off people before you even got in the door if you are brilliant at what you do, um, if you're really good at job interviews, you will sell yourself in that job interview um, and they will hire you because they want you and no one else. And, and if that means changing your job to suit, and also if you get in a job interview, you can talk to them about how you can get as much done in three days as, as Mr. Bacando in five and what you can achieve in that. And you can help sell in not just you, but the idea of job sharing or, or freelance work, or flexible working, but on a cold, hard, LinkedIn pro before they've met you, you could just risk being dismissed. I wish I'd face it. It is very rare that people want someone three days a week, but it is getting better, so don't lose heart. Um, brilliant, David. Please do email me. Um, Thanks for a great webinar, Isabel says. Interesting question from David. One graphic designer I know had a recruiter directly to her existing contact in an attempt to undercut her rate. That's awful. Um, so it clearly, is clearly a problem, um, and it is a real issue. So David, do it is. Uh, I'm always looking to increase my knowledge on LinkedIn, because if you ask a question, chances are 100 people have that same question as well. Um, and so I can help more people, I can write an article about it, and make sure we get that into our courses as well, if it's something people struggle with. So yeah, as Isabel said, it, it is a genuine problem. So I'm really happy to answer that, David, if you email me. Thank you, Annette, very helpful webinar. And Lena. LinkedIn Pulse, Angie asks, how can you search articles of interest here? I can only search posts. Thank you for a fab course. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Angie. Um, how do you search articles of interest here? I can only search posts. I think, I think, because LinkedIn is basically, it is posts. It's like blog posts. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how to answer your question because you can only search posts and I think that's what it is. People share articles of interest but they appear in the status update so they're, they're not searchable. Um, people publish LinkedIn po posts, posts and they are the posts and that's what you can search. Um, I'm not sure if that hasn't answered your question adequately, Andrea. Um, as I mentioned, please do feel free to email me at hannah@townsforladiescup.com and I will look into that further for you. But as far as I'm aware, you can only search LinkedIn Pulse posts, which is what you're saying you can find, um, and they are as far as they are articles. If people share articles of interest, it only appears in their status updates, and they're not searchable as far as I know. Um, so I hope that's helpful. Oh, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, oh, and sorry, ten to two. It's sorry, I um, yeah, ten to two are really good. They're online. It was two to three days, Jess. Um, she just said thank you about 10 to 2. It's 2 to 3 days, so T-W-O, the number 2, and then T-H-R-E-E, -E, days. Those are the local people. 10 to 2 are also brilliant, and they are, um, they are, no, oh, I'll give you one, that is right, sorry. My, <laughs> they're so close in name, and my head is fried after doing this webinar, and uh, thinking on, on the, the cusp, on the, uh, on the fly, 10 to 2 two to three days. Yes, 10 to two is correct. Two to three days are the online people. They're also worth checking out. They post online jobs 
online. I think probably, unless I've got any more questions, that's probably a good time to end there because um, my head is going crazy. So I hope it's been really helpful. Um, if I, if you've got another question on there, please do. I've given my email address out. I'll give it out again, hannah at talentedclub.com. Do feel free to email me. I'd be really happy to answer it. And likewise, if you've got questions about the course and you want to know what's in it, really happy to answer those. I hope that is helpful. If you've taken just one thing out of this today, it's to go and do your LinkedIn profile right now. Um, it's so important. If you haven't got one up there, get one up there. If it's up there, go and check it out. Go and get that all-star status. Go and make sure it really sells you because people will go and look at that. And if you're not giving the right impression, you're giving the wrong impression. And that actually could be detrimental to your job search. So please don't do it. Thank you, Louise and Monica. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. And I'm going to sign off now. So thank you, everybody, for, for joining in. And I hope you've enjoyed this and have a lovely day.